Perceive, process, perform. Do you need inspiration for your practice? Or do you simply need to practice inspiration? With this series, we aim to do both. Give us 15 minutes and we'll give you practice inspiration. In this short video, Dr. Robert Margis explains how to predictably utilize the natural tooth as a provisional for immediate placement of a dental implant. Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Margis. I'm in full-time private practice in Des Moines, Iowa. I work three and a half days a week and then lecture uh, on Fridays 30 to 35 times a year. Today I'm going to talk to you about the use of the natural tooth as a provisional following immediate implant placement. A lot of you think that maybe immediate implant placement is, is relatively new over the last 10 years or so. But I will show you a Panorex that was done in the 70s for my former partner who placed implants and connected them to natural teeth and immediately loaded these things. And I do have a number of cases that are almost 40 years old. So today, my technique is going to be using the natural tooth on the provisional once the implant is placed. And I coordinate that with my oral surgeon or periodontist in order to give the patient the best aesthetic outcome. Now, you can do this technique not using the natural tooth. You can use a bisacryl. You can use a polycarbonate crown. Uh, and, and other materials. Yet, when I find using the natural tooth, I think the aesthetic outcome is excellent. And I started this technique in December of 2004, and over the last 10 years, I've had excellent results with this technique. Now, this patient came in, uh, had to lose the cuspid. And so, I, I sent the patient to the surgeon, the tooth was removed, the implant was placed, and then the surgeon will return the patient back to me and I will immediately provisionalize. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tooth and I'm going to hollow the clinical crown out. I want to use a new diamond burr because I don't want to chatter the enamel. I want to be able to make sure that I don't break the tooth. And what I'm going to do is use a putty matrix that was made prior to extracting the tooth. So I have a guide to go by because I want to have this placed exactly where it was prior to having the extraction done. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to etch the tooth because I want to be able to get a bisacryl such as ProTemp, Luxatemp, Mirror Image Integrity and reline that tooth on the abutment because that's what's going to be critical, making sure that the margins are extremely good. So I etch the tooth, I'll place some adhesive, light cure that, and then I'm going to place my bisacryl in the uh, tooth and place it on the abutment. Now when you place that on the abutment, you're not going to capture all of the margin. You're going to have to reline that tooth in order to have that perfect fit. Because that's what's critical. Because if you don't have a good fit, the tissue is going to either uh, become uh, inflamed or you may trap cement and, and so forth. That's one of the leading causes of implant failure is trapping of cement. So we place that back in the patient mouth using the putty matrix. And now you can see we have a reline of the tooth, but it's not going to fit perfectly. So I have to have another analog out of the mouth that is the exact same fit as the other analog. And so I'm going to fit this on the analog, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some uh, flowable material to reline the margin. The, the critical part is being able to reline it so that you have an accurate margin. As you can see from the fit here, it doesn't fit very well, but it, it, it goes on to the abutment, and what we're going to do is take some flowable composite and reline the margins as we go. And so when you look at this, you can see that I'm attempting to, to capture the margins. I then polish that back. And the key here is making sure you have a flat or concave emergence profile. I don't want to put pressure on the tissue on day one. I can always come back and, 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 and do that later. So here's what it looks like on the abutment. I then go into the patient's mouth, try that in. And you can see that it fits quite well. Now, this is a tip that I picked up from Frank Higginbottom on how do you clean cement off prior to putting it into the patient's mouth. Because if you have too much cement and it gets trapped, you're going to have problems, as I said earlier. So what we do out of the mouth is we'll place some cement in the tooth, push it onto the abutment, clean the excess off, and then seat the restoration. That way you've cleaned it out of the mouth perfectly. 
So you can see we clean the cement off. We take the tooth out of occlusion. The important thing is when you're doing immediates, you don't want to uh, have this patient in occlusion. You, don't want the, you have to inform the patient they can't bite directly on this tooth because that's a, a problem that could lead to failure. This is the tooth on the day of surgery, as you can see, and at three months post-op. And when you look at this, you say to yourself, now, the problem becomes, is my laboratory going to be able to do a better job than this temporary restoration? An up-close uh, view of that, and the lingual view. Now, this patient also had two other implants previously placed, and so he wasn't really in a hurry to have this one due to financial constraints, and so I said, you know what, let's just leave this on. Came back at recalls at one year, year and a half, two years, three years, and I had not restored the case. I left it the way that it was. And when you look at the case here, you can see that it integrates into the tissue quite nicely. That's a four-year post-op. Now, believe me, I didn't make any money on this case yet because I've never restored the, the tooth. My fee is around $350 to $400 for the provisional, similar to what like a removable appliance would be, like an Essex or even a bonded restoration. So here it is at five years. At six years, I decided to probe the case, and when I probed, I had uh, some blanching of the tissue at three millimeters. And so when I look at the case, there was a connection to that tooth. I didn't, um, I wasn't able to probe down through that down to the implant. So at six years, and then once again, eight years, and then at nine years and nine months, this case is now 10 years and two months old, I take another picture and a radiograph. And what I want to show you on the radiograph is, when you look at this, this is a polished collar implant. The bone level is just perfect now. We didn't get bone loss to the first thread. And you hear Salama and Garber say, tissue's the issue and the bone sets the tone. When it comes to immediates, it's really the plate that delivers your fate. If you don't have a facial plate, you're going to be in for a problem. The other thing is, you hear one abutment one time. How about one abutment one crown one time? A case study of one. But it's now been in the mouth 10 years and two months. I haven't restored the case. This has never come off the abutment. I use temporary cement. And why would I restore this now if, if it's been in function for that long and hasn't come off? If it comes off, we'll go ahead and restore it. Here's the, another angle of the x-ray. You can see the bone. And it's a successful case without having it even restored. That's a cement retained immediate provisionalization. Now, a lot of you may say, well, I only do screw retained provisionals, and, and I agree with that. I think screw retained provisionals are better for a couple of reasons. Not trapping cement and having the ability to form the tissue later on. When you're able to push that, screw it on, you can always add later on to move the tissue into the direction that you want it to move. So when you look at the Panorex, you can see he had three previously placed implants, all very successful. But if you look at the bone on this one, it does seem to be a little bit better, having not taken it off the abutment. This next case I want to show is a screw-retained type provisional, also using the natural tooth. It becomes a little bit more difficult using the natural tooth when you're doing a screw-retained because you've got to make sure that the access hole is really coming out the lingual. If it's coming out the facial, you can still do screw retained with a bisacryl, but you don't, um, you have to use composite on the facial to patch that up. So, once again, tooth comes out, we have the tooth. I'm going to cut the root off and hollow that clinical crown out. This is now a prepable abutment. It's a titanium with a little peak material on there. I'm going to mark the margins, and I'm going to prep this like a crown prep out of the mouth. I'm going to then, place that back in the patient's mouth. Here's the tooth after having the root cut off and hollowed out. And you can see the screw access hole on the lingual. I'm going to use that to be able to adapt it to my abutment and then be able to unscrew the tooth out of the mouth. Here it is placed over the abutment to see the access. And I use a cotton stick so I don't get acrylic into that channel. That's very important. You could use plumber's tape, you can use other materials, but that stick kind of guided me into where I wanted to place that tooth over the abutment. Here we are, we allow the acrylic to stick to that abutment, and then I'm going to remove the stick and get to that screw hole with my screwdriver. I unscrew that, and once again, the key point is, are the margins going to be very accurate? Usually not. Usually you have to reline that with some flowable material, 
And as you can see here, if you cemented this, or if you screwed this in like this, you're going to have issues because it's going to be too bulky on the facial. You have margins that are exposed. And so I want to fill this in with either acrylic or flowable composite. Once again, making a flat emergence profile. And as you can see, we're removing the excess material and contouring it so that we don't have any bulkiness on that facial. I then go ahead and screw this into the patient's uh, mouth and this is how the patient leaves the office. Taking the tooth out of occlusion, making sure you don't have any occlusal forces on because that's what's going to possibly uh, cause failure of your immediates. You know, having done this for about 10 years, I've had very minimal failures. Why? Because I make sure I control the occlusal force and the patient accepts responsibility knowing they can't bite on that tooth like a normal tooth. Otherwise, I tell them you may have to have a removable appliance, a flipper, may cause lisping. Anytime nobody really wants to wear a removal, if I can do something that's permanent, you know, as a provisional, that's what I want to do. So this is how the patient presents a, uh, a couple weeks later. And then we're ready to make the final impression about three months after initial placement. So when the patient presents for the final impression, I remove the abutment, and you can see the nice architecture of the tissue. I, I normally use a custom impression coping where we'll place composite on that uh, impression coping to maintain the same architecture that we've spent so much time trying to achieve. We place our impression cylinder. This is different for all implant companies, but it's a very similar technique whether you use Nobel, Straumann, 3i, Astra. And we go ahead and we place the impression cylinder back into the impression. I then will have my laboratory fabricate a full contour layered um, crown using zirconium. And the zirconium abutment will be stacked, portion will be stacked onto that. And then I can screw retain this restoration. As you can see, excellent placement by the surgeon. I then will use some plumber's tape to seal off the axis with some composite. And when we get done, you can see that the blanching of the tissue, I look for that. And normally what I'll do is that if, if I place the, the tooth and the blanching subsides in six to seven minutes, I go ahead and seat the restoration. If the blanching doesn't subside, normally what I'm going to do is have to recontour that facial or what I'm going to have to do is do something with a tissue. Normally I don't ever touch the tissue. I do that with the, the uh, final. And here's what you can see at the one year post-op. The tissue architecture normally stays. When you listen to Tarnow and Chu, <clears throat> their recommendation today is different than what it was five years ago. They really believe in immediate placement and provisionalization of the, the socket. Prior to that, they recommended immediate placement, but they were never provisionalizing. Today, they are recommending that. And as you can see here, this is our final result. Patient's happy we made the porcelain appear to have a little chip in it so that we can match the mimicking adjacent tooth. And those are two simple ways to create good architecture, a good service for the patient, something that's been predictable over the last 10 years, not something that we've just created you know, over the last couple years. And so I would challenge you to use this technique, whether it be the natural tooth, the bisacryl, protemp, whatever you, whatever you decide to do. But if you're not you know, doing this technique, I think that you are missing the boat by creating the best aesthetics that you can doing the immediate provisionalization. Thank you.